I'm Jerry from Jim's Cleaning Glen Iris. I worked as a corporate guy throughout my life. Just before start getting into Jim's Cleaning, I was a project manager. So during COVID, I lost my job and then I wanted to do something for myself to be my own boss. And then at that time, my kids got into university. So I wanted to take that calculated risk and get into Jim's Cleaning. So that's how I got into Jim's Cleaning. I was looking at uh, Jim's Moving and then looking at Tag and Test as well. But Jim's Moving, I had to drop that idea because it is weather dependent. On a rainy day, hot sunny day, I can't work. Test and Tag, I had to drop that because you can't scale it. I was running big businesses in my previous life. So I wanted to scale whatever the business that I started. So Jim's Cleaning will allow me to have a team, which I currently have, and then sky is the limit so I can grow my business. Not necessarily because Jim's, uh, they were the, I did my own homework, then I saw that uh, they were the largest franchise so in Australia. Um, and then I thought the best thing is to go with a known brand and then I don't have to market myself because I already get that credentials from Jim's uh, group. Currently, I operate in most of southeastern suburbs. So in those suburbs, I have not limit myself. So whatever the business come in my way, I take it. I started with only gyms leads, but when I did my work well and then I created a name in the industry, I started getting referrals. And then through my customer referrals, I have got most of my jobs. And then there are renovation companies who currently work with me and then continuously they give me business and then I am a preferred provider for NDIS cleaning as well. So I have a big portfolio of NDIS participants as well. Initially, I was even though I was a corporate guy, I did not know about marketing much because you know in, our, in my previous jobs there were teams of people doing our marketing. But here initially gyms helped me to get all my businesses and then it was mainly referrals. Now I'm trying to get into, um, because you know, if you take NDIS businesses, we can, I always talk to the coordinators and when they get new participants, they refer them to me. So that is one of my key channels. Looking at getting into Facebook, but did not have the time. So Adriana from Gyms, they, she's helping me to set it up. So very soon I'll be marketing on Facebook as well. Yeah, of course, I'm more than happy. Like when I was living from paycheck to paycheck versus running a business, it makes a big difference. Your income is good. And then you always have this feel good factor because you employ people, you give them opportunity to you know, thrive in what they do. Lots of uh, university students work for me. So I actually help them to get to their dreams as well. And money is really good. So that's why I'm continuing. It's mostly from, again, from referrals of the people who are working. I have advertised myself for employment. Uh, always the people who are working for me because I'm treating them well, they bring new people in. And then we train them and they become part of our team. I'm so happy, even the first person who joined me like three years ago, still he's working for me. So that means that I'm doing something good. Otherwise, you know, he would have left. Paying them on time, they get like, you know, meals in between. When they do a, let's say a long job, they will be provided a free meal. Mostly they are very keen to get their payments on time. So they, have, they never ever remind me to pay. Once they do their job, they will get paid, you know, fortnightly without fail. So with that, and then when they do a mistake, I never jump on them. I always tell, okay, it's always good to do mistakes, but you got to learn mistakes. My philosophy is doing mistakes is an investment. That's how I see like people doing mistakes. All you have to do is not repeat that. If you repeat that, then it's a loss for the business. But if you learn from that, and then if you don't repeat it, then you know, we are set. For new franchises, you have to be very good in your numbers. You cannot like let do a business and then not follow up your payments. You know, if you don't follow up your payments and if you don't get paid as good as you didn't do a job and you've got to plan, right? I am a firm believer of, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail. So if you don't plan, it's a failure. And then you've got to invest in your business. You can't be just, you know, consuming what you get in your business. You've got to reinvest in your business. You are invested in systems. Now I have invested in planning tools. I have invested in accounting tools. You've got to have a good accountant. So all those are very important for a newcomer as well. Right, and as I told you, my career was a corporate career. So when I got into cleaning, first of all, I got my hands dirty to learn the job well. So then 
anyone who joins me has to have the same attitude, right? If I can do it, they can do it. Going into detail and then not taking shortcuts is key in our business. No one is pushed for time. I have never ever told rush the job and then come. Take time and then if you are taking more time than allocated, please let me know what is the reason. That's all, right? I have never ever told them, hey mate, you have given only one hour, finish this and come. I always value the customer satisfaction because customers are the people who have been giving me business all this time. It's referrals is the ones that which has brought me up to this level. So I don't want to compromise on quality. Everyone has to take quality very seriously. I go up to the extent of taking photos after each job, each worker after they do their job, they have to send the photographs to, uh, the, we have WhatsApp group, to that group. So from that, I personally look at all photos and then make sure that it is up to the standard. So with that, we have some evidence as well if something goes wrong. So it's very important for anyone, if you want to maintain quality, you have to drive it. Now, I'm working with big companies, as I told you. So generally, big, big companies, you don't have to worry about getting paid. But still, even if it's a big company, you have to follow up to make sure that they pay on time. If they have not paid on time, you can always kindly talk to the accounts department and then tell these invoices are outstanding, you know, please pay and the next day you get paid. And if it's, a, if it's an individual, you've got to be very careful because, you know, you don't know that person in person. And especially if it's a vacate clean, you've got to understand the name vacate says they vacate the place and go. So if you don't know where this person is going to, then you are in trouble if they don't pay. So for vacate cleans, at least try and get an advance payment and then get the full payment before leaving the site. And then before starting the job, make sure that you have that person's email address and the new address that they are moving to. Then you have some like evidence and then details if something goes wrong, even if you want to go into debt collection, you got to have those information. Otherwise you can't even go for debt collection. I take customer complaints very seriously. So as I'm the one who's running the business, whoever who does the job, complaint comes to me. And then we immediately attend to it. I never tell the customer that you are wrong. We always take customer feedback positively and then we rectify it within 24 hours. If we get the complaint today and if we can't attend to it today, next day, first thing in the morning, we keep the other jobs aside and then send a team to fix it. Because we go into a lot of detail, the errors or fixes that they identify are very minimal. Within an hour or so, we can rectify it. As you can imagine, when you go to a disorganized place for cleaning, after you clean, anyone can spot the errors, right? So that's what the customer is also doing. Customer was used to that disorganized environment. Now we have cleaned it. So even the customer can pick minute things, but we can fix it. So if you attend to it and then fix it then and there, then you're sorted. It's the brand. Now, when you walk into a customer site wearing your uniform and then with a gym's signage on your vehicle, you have, you know, won the customer 50% straight away, even before starting the job, because they know that these guys are coming uh, from a reputed organization and they, they know that they have a fallback plan. If we muck it up, they know that they can, uh, they have a, like a resolution route to go to. That's the beauty of, you know, working for a big brand like gyms, because it's a trusted brand in Australia. So you got to know what are your overheads and per hour overhead absorption rate. So you got to know like to run your business per hour how much it's going to cost you. And with your experience you will know how long it will take to complete the job. So if you can cover your overheads and if you can cover the rate that you are paying to your workers and then add your profit margin, that's the way you got to cost it. You can't like do cheap because you know you will burn out soon. Some people think you undercoat, you get the job, but they don't survive for too long. You have to have a decent margin to continue in business. Yeah, like when we go to a customer site, if we see that they have other things that we can help them with, for example, you go to a once-off internal cleaning, and then you see that their windows are not that great. So then we can always offer the customer, hey, you know, why don't you get the window saucer clean? Why don't you get the driveway clean? So that's the upsell and then, you know, add more into our bucket. Yeah, I would say like, you know, if you take a risk in life, that will pay you off. When I wanted to buy the gym's franchise, I used my redundancy payment to buy that. So my friends told me that you are crazy, mate. You know, you can live with this money for at least six months till you find the next job. I said, mate, you know, this is what I wanted to do. Even I was a corporate guy, I wanted to have my own business. So if I don't take a risk, I will never start this. I have to make that drastic move in my life to see whether it is working or not. If you don't jump into that, you don't know how deep it is. Right? So that's what I did and then I'm successful.
Of really course, yeah. you know, even today when I met one of the franchises I was telling, I came to Australia in 2013. I was interviewed from, when I came from Sri Lanka, they interviewed me and I came straight to the job. If I was looking for a job when I came to Australia, I would have seen these things and I would have started. But unfortunately for me, I started a job, so I missed that opportunity. And then I had to wait till I was made redundant to think, oh my God, you know, there are other avenues. So it's like, you know, you got to be able to execute a plan. So to execute a plan, you have to have a plan. So if you don't, that's what I told, you know, if you don't plan, it's like planning to fail, yeah? So if you have a plan and if you can execute it and then you can drive towards the end result, it will be successful. If someone thinks getting into this business and then everything will, you know, just flow to you, it won't happen like that, you know. The amount of effort that you put will be shown as a result at the end of the month. I want to like get into more areas in cleaning because, you know, cleaning is like, as you know, it's sky is the limit, right? We are just into, I'm still in, operating in domestic arena, so I want to get into commercial, and then I want to widespread in different areas as well. So that will give me more access to more businesses, and then I should be able to employ more people and then grow my business. Yeah, of course, like, there's nothing called a free meal, right? So you are working with a big brand, they have their overhead cost as well. So thing is, if you work with a big brand like gyms, if someone wants to compare what you charge, with another company, right? If they feel we are a bit expensive, they will still take it because, you know, we come from a, a big brand. If you want to work with a big brand, yes, you've got to pay a premium price. So if you are with gyms, you can always charge that premium price. Yeah, of course, yeah. I, I actually, you know, first few days when I started my business, I would have had maybe two, three hours of sleep. I was doing my invoicing, I was doing my paperwork till two, three in the morning, uh, all by myself. But now, lucky for me, my wife is helping, so she has taken lots of admin take workload off from me. So because of that, I, now I can concentrate on my operations. So anyone can do it. I mean, it's, it's the mindset, it's the attitude, it's the way that you want to drive your business. You know, you can be like a sole trader and then just be happy with, you know, two, three jobs a day and then, you know, till whatever the time you want. But I, I, as I told you, I got into cleaning because the scalability not like other, other divisions that I saw. I saw that this can be scaled, and then that's why I got into that. Yeah, so they, they, are, they are really happy for me. They see the way that I live and then the, my lifestyle. But they still are, like most of my friends are like accountants, finance directors, that kind of people. So as you know, accountants and then finance directors, they are in that background, and then they are very reluctant to take like risks. So they are very risk averse, but I'm, I'm, when I see a risk, I'm running towards it, when I see the opportunity, but they run away from it. So that's the difference.